All right, I'm Daniel. I'm back, and in this video, we're going to continue enhancing our functional set. So let's get back to the ID, and uh, let me show you what I mean. All right, so we're back in the ID, and uh, we've done some uh, really good job of defining a functional set that is a collection that extends a function that is a function. And right now, I want us to implement as an exercise. As before, we're going to pause the video and then I'm going to come up with solutions. But the exercise here will enhance our functional set with some uh, set specific operators. And the operators that I want you to implement is removing of an element, intersection with another set, and the difference with another set. So these operators shouldn't be really too hard to implement. I want you to pause the video and implement them real quick, and I'll come back with solutions in a moment. All right, so I hope you implement these yourself because these should be really uh, simple. So let me go ahead and define the method signatures first, and then let's implement them in the subclasses. So uh, removing an element, I'm just going to name this method minus, and this will return to my set. Um, intersection with another set, I'm going to name this ampersand, like and, and I'm going to pass in another set, which is a my set A. And at the result, we're going to return a my set A. And difference with another set, I'm just going to name this method minus minus, just uh, so that we could have a symmetrical notation with the uh, union operator here. So this is called union. And this will be the difference. So I'm going to pass in another set, which is uh, my set A. And at the end, I'm going to return a my set A. So this is the difference. And this is the intersection. So let's go ahead and implement these real quick in the subclasses. And as you see, they've become red again because um, the classes don't have these methods implemented yet. So let's call this part two. And uh, let's just implement these operators real quick. So in empty set, removing, intersecting, and difference will all return the same object. So um, removing an element from an empty set doesn't really make sense. It will just return this. Removing a whole set, again, doesn't make sense. So I'm just going to return this. And intersecting an empty set with anything will just return an empty set. So the uh, implementations here for the empty set are really, really straightforward. All right, let's implement these. The same methods here with part two for the non-empty set. And uh, here's where things will start to get a little bit more interesting. First, removing an element. This should be pretty straightforward. So if the head is equal to element, then I'm just going to return tail. Otherwise, watch what I'm writing. I'm just going to remove the element from the tail, or attempt to remove it. So tail minus element, and then I'm going to add head back. So I'm recursively calling the method minus on tail, and then I'm adding head back. Cool. Now, the intersection and the difference here are going to be very interesting. I'm going to start with intersection first, because it will introduce the need for filtering. So I'm going to write the implementation as filter, where I, for every x in the set, I'm just going to say another set contains x. So intersecting this set with another set is filtering all the elements in this set on the condition that the other set also contains x. Now, we can refactor this because contains is the contract for the set, but also the set is functional in the sense that the apply is the same contract for the set, we can say another set with x. 
So apply and contains are one and the same, so we can just call another set with the value x. Now, if I can say uh, x arrow another set x, then I can just reduce this to filtering on another set, because another set is also a function. So notice how simple the implementation for intersection actually is. And if you take another mental step to think about this, you'll notice that intersecting and filtering is basically one and the same thing, because intersecting actually calls filter without any other thing. So intersection and filtering is actually the same thing. That's because our set is functional. So that's pretty cool. Now, if we move to the difference here, we can also call filter, where for every x, I'm going to say that the other set does not contain x. All right, so again, we can uh, reduce this to say, not another set with x. And if we really want this, we could, if we wanted to, implement a new operator on set to be able to say filter and not another set. So we could implement a unary operator here for um, negating basically a set. So if we wanted to, we can define a unary underscore bang. We talked about unary operators in the beginner scores and we could say that unary bang returns a my set A. And if we put this into the my set trait, we could in theory filter on not another set. So this is the subject for my next exercise, which is, this is exercise number two, and this will be exercise number three. Implement a unary underscore bang, which is the negation of a set. So basically, if I have the set one, two, three, then unary underscore bang will return the set of everything but one, two, three. So take a few moments to think about this. Think about how you would implement the negation of a set. Take whatever time you need, because this is an important concept, because we started with the assumption that a my set is not really a collection in the classical sense, but a function. So think about this, pause the video, and I'll come up with some insights after the break. We'll get into some really interesting places and potentially deep rabbit holes. So pause the video now and uh, I'll come back with solutions. So I hope you gave this a good mental beating because we are going to get really deep into potentially infinite collections. If you think about this, negating a set of finite number of elements will lead to an infinite number of elements. So how do you deal with that? Well, um, we'll see in uh, the suggested solution to this exercise. But before that, I wanted you to be very careful about the uh, unary underscore bang and leaving a space between the name and the colon, because if you don't, then the compiler will think that the method name is unary underscore bang colon. So it will include the colon in the method name. So make sure you have a space between the method name and the colon for the return type. All right, people um, get really frustrated here because they don't know why the compiler is uh, yelling at them. So let's just go ahead and implement this method for empty set and non-empty set. And then we'll extract the commonalities of the two into um, a new uh, potentially infinite uh, property-based set. But before that, Let's start with the basics and the straightforward. So unary bang for an empty set, if you think about this, is going to be an all-inclusive set. So if you negate an empty set, that will lead into creating um, a set that will just include every single element of type A. So I'm going to create a new my set A and the compiler already suggests that I implement all these methods here. All right. I am going to create these methods in a special class. I'm going to call this class all-inclusive set. 
because um, otherwise this whole code becomes really hard to read. So this extends my setting. And I'm going to implement all the methods here. Okay, and as the result of the unary underscore bank for the empty set, I'm just going to instantiate a new all-inclusive set of type A and I should be done with it. And here in the all-inclusive set, we're going to implement all the methods inside. So the contains is going to just return true because for any element A, the all-inclusive set contains it. Adding another set doesn't make any sense. It will just return this same all-inclusive set. Also concatenating another set will just return this all-inclusive set because it already contains anything. Okay, now mapping, flat mapping and filtering uh, is going to be pretty interesting. So mapping an all-inclusive set is going to be very interesting. Think about the following case. If I have an all-inclusive set of integers, okay, so all the natural numbers. Okay, let's call this all or naturals. All right, what happens if I say naturals map and I pass in a lambda which does this? So for all ints, I'm going to map it with x mod 3. Now, what, is, what does this give us? And the answer is that if we map all the naturals to this map, to this mapping function, we're just going to return the numbers 0, 1, 2. So from an infinite set, we suddenly get into a finite set. So how would you implement that? We don't know that yet. So we are going to leave map and flat map unimplemented for now. Okay. Filtering is going to be fairly interesting and this will introduce the concept of a property-based set. That means all the elements of type A that satisfy this predicate, which could be an infinite number of those elements. Now, difference and intersection are going to be implemented in terms of filter, as was the case with the non-empty set. If you remember, difference and intersection were implemented in terms of filter. So if we say that intersecting an all-inclusive set with another set leaves filter with another set, that's a valid definition. And again, the difference, if we say filter with not another set, that's also a valid definition. And after that, the unary bang operator on an all-inclusive set is a new empty set, right? So the all-inclusive set and the empty set are opposite or symmetrical in that sense. But we still have five methods here that are problematic for the all-inclusive set because an all-inclusive set is infinite and it requires the introduction of a property-based set. So instead of defining this all-inclusive set as a very constrained type of set with some unimplemented methods because we don't really know what actually makes sense for map, flat map for each filter and removal, let's create a class called property based set of type A and this will take a property from A to boolean which extends my set A and this will denote all the elements of type A which satisfy the property because an all-inclusive set is a particular case of a property-based set where for every element in uh, the domain A the function of the property returns true. So instead of defining this all-inclusive set Let's delete it altogether and let's implement the methods here in the property based set class because we'll see that the property based set is much more flexible in defining properties for potentially infinite functional sets. This is hard stuff people so stick with me, follow up in the next video and let's do this.